ideas for fixing the problem. Tonight in our special series, Cynthia Bowers spells out where they stand. When it comes to sports, whether it's a basketball court or on the ice, high school seniors Britt Schneiders and Raven Gary know what it's like to be the best. Both girls are on Illinois state championship teams. But when it comes to the public schools they each attend, these two aren't even in the same league. Put the games and places on the table, ladies. Ravens High School, John Marshall, is on Chicago's tough west side. It's part of the third largest school district in the country, where students average a meager 17 out of 36 on the ACT, the all-important college entrance exam. But the average at Marshall is only 14. The graduation rate has hovered around 50 percent. Less than 8 percent of Marshall students read at grade level. Fewer than 3 percent are at grade level in math. After high school, I plan on going to college. Raven makes A's, but she and her mom, Sharon Williams, say it's been a real struggle at a school that doesn't even have enough textbooks to send home with students. When you look at what other schools have where the kids take home textbooks, they've got their backpacks full of books every night, do you feel like you're getting ripped off? And why do you think the country's letting that happen? Maybe because nobody's painting the big picture in front of their face. What is the big picture? That we need the tools to learn. <laughs> At Britt's Public High School, just a half hour north, New Trier, there's no shortage of textbooks. Parents buy them. And excellence is expected in this 4,000 student district, which spends $17,000 per pupil compared to 10,000 in Chicago public schools. At New Trier, some of the course offerings sound like those at an Ivy League university. Sports and entertainment marketing, sequential art and animation, zoology, scuba diving. New Trier students average a 27 out of 36 on the ACT. The graduation rate is 99 percent. So is the percentage of kids who go on to college. How lucky do you feel when you think about what you're able to walk in and get versus what they're getting? We're really lucky here. Like a lot of people at New Trier take it for granted. Like I do sometimes. You don't think that a lot of people have a lot have it a lot worse down even just in our own city in Chicago. There is no question American schools are falling behind. The national graduation rate is just 70 percent. It's less than 50 percent for students of color. American 15 year olds are ranked 19th of 40 countries in science, 28th in math. OK, go ahead and continue for me. Both Obama and McCain say getting students prepared to compete in the global economy must be a priority. Their big difference? The role the federal government should play. Obama proposes adding $18 billion a year to the education budget, expanding programs like Head Start. Every dollar we invest in that, we end up getting huge benefits with improved reading scores, reduced dropout rates, reduced delinquency rates. He wants to fight the dropout rate by spending more on intervention programs beginning in middle school. And to help increase the number of teachers, he proposes 40,000 college scholarships to encourage undergrads to go into the classroom. McCain, unlike Obama, supports vouchers that give public money to families to send their kids to private schools. He wants to expand programs such as the one in Washington, D.C., that offers $7,500 scholarships to 1,900 low-income students that gives them an alternative to public school. What is the advantage in a low-income area of sending a child to a failed school, and that being your only choice? He wants teachers to be paid based on merit and wants to make it easier to recruit teachers from other professions. On the whole, McCain believes most school-related issues should be handled at the local level. Both candidates believe more money isn't the only answer. You will find that some of the worst school systems in America get the most money per student. Parents are going to have to show more responsibility. They've got to turn off the TV set, put away the video games. What chances do these proposals have of succeeding in the real world? When it comes to charter schools, schools that are publicly funded but privately managed, which both Obama and McCain support, reviews are mixed. But Raven's family is excited about the one her little sister just got into. Are you jealous or happy for her? I'm happy for her because I don't want her to go through the same thing I had to go through just to get an education. Head Start, that Obama supports expanding, has been operating for 35 years. And while it has supporters and detractors, there is wide agreement that getting to kids early is crucial to further success. 
When it comes to vouchers, which McCain supports, the Washington, D.C.-based program has shown promise. 90% of its graduates go on to college, compared to just 30% in the district's public schools. Our families admit to skepticism about political promises. The rhetoric always sounds good. It's not clear to me how you bring that down to you know, a school by school it. basis, how you improve them. Just come up with some kind of programs that makes it a little easier for them to get all that they need. They need to care about us more because what if one of us want to be president one day? Can't be the president if you don't know math. For her part, Britt realizes this season may be her last playing hockey, and that's okay. Her academics and her family will get her through college, but Raven is under tremendous pressure to shine on the court this year. An athletic scholarship may be her best chance at college. She hopes her little brother and sister get a better shot. Cynthia Bowers, CBS News, Chicago. And starting tomorrow, we'll be visiting three regions of the...